action. Well, my mind is always on music. It's been 51 years. Can you believe that? I don't even feel 51 years old. Hmm. I haven't played in a few days and my hands are not stretched. Stretched out. I mean, the minute we met him, it was sort of friendship made immediately. For big parties, he would come and then uh, unasked. We didn't ask him. And we certainly never paid him. In the beginning, I would play, and for a long time, I waited to be asked to play. But it feels so much like home now that I can, if, if the moment comes that I feel like playing something or I feel there should be some music to lift the room a little bit, then I feel free to go to the piano. He got the, all these people to go to the piano and then sing something. Many, many artists from the Metropolitan Opera. And they loved him. They, every artist would say, God, who is this guy? He's so musical. This is just going to have to be okay. <laughs> All right. Give us about a half hour, I think. All right. Well, you want to hear a funny story? Sissy's son was introducing me to a friend of his. He said, this is Larry, our piano player. <laughs> and the guy says, you have your own piano player? And he said, well, yes, doesn't everybody? <laughs> It's, it's an old world setting. But Sissy's working at the Met. And she comes in daily contact with the artists. It's very inviting and very enticing. Admittedly, it's conducive to getting people to sing because they feel like they're in, in a cafe in Vienna or something. If I know their repertoire and the particular Fach in which they sing, uh, I can often entice them with just a few strains of their their arias or whatever. You know, many people do invite singers, but they're usually the big donors, and they don't have the, the freedom as we have here. This is totally informal. That's I think that's the secret, no? The higher up the, the ladder we go, the more comfortable I feel. I find it hard to play for my close friends if there's just, just a, a group of friends around. I know they know me. I know that if I hit one false note, if you will, that they will know. I mean, thinking of like playing at the White House, I was not at all nervous. It just doesn't happen. The United Nations are at the Met. I'm ready to go. Larry became an, an entity here. And that was in 1983 or so, 84. And here we are in 19... No, forget 19. 2014. It's the 21st century. It's a long time ago. <laughs> he 
gets the singers at some point to sing, if they want to, nobody is forced to, of course. He has made our parties in what they are. One time when I was playing, something came over me. Just like that, so kind of shocking. And see, I hate to tell this story because people don't believe you when you tell such stories. I felt myself moving away from the piano, yet I was still at the piano playing. And I was watching myself play. And it was fantastic. <laughs> It was more glorious than anything I've ever played. Um, and it frightened me to death. I think it was the muse. Um, and I was in what they call now a days the zone. It was within me. And it stayed ever since. So that when I start to play the piano, I'm, I can almost judge what it's going to be like. My fingers may not be as flexible as they would be if I'd been playing every day, but that thing is in there. God gave it to him. Wherever he is, he's now in an assisted living facility, but he is the star at the place there. He's special. Yeah, he's There's a very no second person. Larry Woodard. Now watch this. You go zzzz. <laughs> of course, it was a very long time before I could even stand up to do such a thing as this. I've forgotten what, oh, this is called a, a dressing stick. After you get your pants on, you can go zip and pull them up. <laughs> anyway, there was a time when it hurt to sit, to stand, or to lie down. Hurt, hurt, hurt all day, all night. And uh, I certainly didn't want to play or sing or do anything. Do. Wow, I've never done that before. When he unfortunately became ill, he had more and more problems with walking and with his back and, and surgery. I hadn't worked for three years because of all the operations, you know on the back and the hips. The landlords of his, his apartment were trying to uh, evict him and uh, somehow Larry's, uh, the love for Larry didn't just go to Sissy and me, but it also went to many of the opera uh, artists that came here and they asked about him and when they learned that he had these problems, uh, without any asking, there was a, a an outpouring of, of kindness and uh, the and generosity. and generosity and I was able to collect well more than a year's rental for him that was sort of the the funding to enable him to put it in storage and and uh, go on with his life I think he's pretty happy where he is now he's certainly well loved there and now And so I face the final curtain My friends, I'll say it clear I'll state my case of which I'm certain I've lived a life that's full I've traveled each and every highway But more, much more than this
Save the 